Joey? Hi, Joey. This is uh, Jen. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I just had to put on put on my rock and roll ears here. Your your rock and roll ears. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I ha- also have in the room Jose. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, for both of you, Jose and Jennifer. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay. So you guys released um, for the first time since 1991 this collection of um, new songs. Are you you know Are you excited to play those? Is there one you prefer playing over the others? No, no. For the new ones, I like playing Indy Cindy, mm-hmm. Ma- and Magdalena, and uh, Blue Eye Hexay, which is not out yet. I, I don't know. Okay. But those, okay. those, but we we've, we've been playing that anyway. You can see it live; so it's no secret. So, but it's uh, you know, um, yeah, Indy Cindy, I, I I love playing that one, uh, and as well as Magdalena, I, I like the sounds that's coming out of the guitar on that one. So you guys record the recorded those songs um, earlier this year, I think, in Wales. Um, yes. So how did that come about? Because I know in the past you had said that you really wanted to make sure that when you did get into a studio and record, you really wanted to be organic, everybody to kind of just um, not be like in the past when you guys were just writing on the road and everything was like so fast, you know, you were so fast and pumping out, pumping out product. Um, mm-hmm. how, was, how was this in comparison? Uh, you mean the recording for You're talking about the, the, rec- the, the actual process of like getting in there and... <coughs> Well, well, yeah, the getting in there, uh, uh, I spent about uh, uh, weeks with Charles Pryor, uh, just recording recording his ideas uh, on uh, on my little uh, work, like, laptop recording station, um, and then presented it, and then rehab, and then just you know uh, whittled it down to uh, uh, you know just kind of blew it up more for the studio. Went in there, but as far as the recording process goes, I'm always, you know, it's, uh, uh, I love it. It's very uh, gratifying, but uh, to me, I look at it as, uh, it's a lot of work, you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. not, uh, it's fun, but it's good, good uh, work, meaning uh, I don't want to sound like a schmuck. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? I mean, th- that's my biggest fear is like, I just don't, you know, and there's a lot of that happening. When you spoo out ideas, it's like, oh, that sucks. That sucks. That sucks. <laughs> and are that you guys sucks. very open with that each sucks. other where you're like, dude, that sucks? No. <laughs> well, you know, I'd, I, I'd have all these ideas down. Now there's like digital things. You could just throw sh- stuff out there. So I do that, and then, and then um, it's up to the committee <laughs> to, tell, <laughs> to tell me which sucks the least. Are there any times mm-hmm. where you just kind of blow up at each other, you know, because <laughs> you're kind of the more um, quiet one out of the two. So I'm curious as to how, what the dynamic is when you're actually, when you're working and creating together. Mm, no, I mean. We know ne- we never had blown up at each other. We're just we're very too uh, we're too we're too chilled out, you know. Yeah. And when when we do, we probably would just be, go in our caves for a while. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. We would just let go. Oh, uh oh, something's happening here. Blah blah blah. You know. And uh, it always works out, anyways. You know. It's always like uh, it's always civil. You know, you're, you're just mm-hmm. making music for crying out loud, you know, and then uh, you try stuff. It's always, um, yeah, it, it, it's never been a blow up scenario, you know what I mean? Um, He's never hit me. He never, he never hit you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if that's what, if, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> he can scream, though. <laughs> I bet you he can. <laughs> he can, but you know he, he's got an even even temperament. You know he's he's uh, he's a, he's a funny guy. You know, funny fella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and now let's talk about a bit about how you guys met. You guys met when you were at UMass. Yes. And uh, what happened there? So he yeah, he was, he went, yeah went to Puerto Rico. after a couple of years. I, I guess he got uh, 
he just wanted to try something else, and he just wanted to go um, study abroad to Puerto Rico, yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. And then oh, he had a a psycho roommate, apparently, and that's what made him kind of decide, it's time to do this. I mean, I need to get out of this situation. I mean, mm. <laughs> yeah, apparently, apparently he had a psycho roommate, and he wrote me, you know, and, uh, you know, a letter on paper, no email, it's a paper, I don't think they had it back then, uh, and wrote it and said, Dear Joey, blah, 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 you know, and, uh, you know, it's a saying to the effect, like, you know, uh, we're in our 20s, we're going to hit our 20s, let's fuck shit up, you know, let's do it, this is the time, you know, we, and then we were, I was kind of getting bored of college life, you know, and, um, and, uh, you know, I, I agreed to it. I still have that letter, but I, I, I cannot find it now. Ah, that's something to put in a frame. <laughs> I, I, I know, I know i got to look for that thing. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually watching um, What Goes Boom, the music video, and mm -hmm. in which you get blown up to bloody hell. Yep. Um, how did that come about? How do you guys sit down and decide, hey, let's, uh, Joey, let's blow you up? Uh, well, I asked. I asked, uh, I asked uh, Matthew and Jonathan, uh, or Matthew, like, uh, you know, why did you guys pick me, you know? And they're, they're good friends of mine, you know, and um, and they said, oh, it's because we love hanging out with you. <laughs> That was it. That really was the, that, that was the reason, really, you know, and, uh, we did, you know, and we, um, that's what it just came down to. I, we just, what, what it is, we trust people with their, uh, instincts, you know what I mean? Um, uh, we, as far as like people doing artwork for us, we go, you, that's your department, you do it, you know what I mean? And when we do our music, Please leave us alone, you know. So uh, I don't yeah, know what I'm us, getting with give it. Give us the trust. Well, I, I kind of see what you're saying. It's uh, you. You trust people creatively because that's what you would expect them, others, to give to you when you're creating. Mm. Well, you know, oddly enough, when you when you don't give anyone guidelines, you actually put more pressure on them. Mm -hmm. to create something, you know, sometimes, it, you know, sometimes, you know, I would, I think it's harder to create something without guidelines than than, than with guidelines. It is, you know because I mean? you're not following a preset pattern. So no, you the, you know, of... everything's open, so, you know, it, and that pressure is always good. It's always good to create something out of that, you know. And I mean, when you guys started in the '80s, you um, you didn't have you kind of. I would say you started the whole alternative rock movement. There was really nothing out there like you. Um, you know the loud, quiet, loud formula. You know, I don't think we really created that loud, quiet, loud business. You know, um, mm. I mean, there's there's a lot of examples out there before us. Um, uh, but uh, I think uh, we did take it to the F degree, you know, where it, where it would just be bass and uh, whatever it is, and, and a percussion, and then go out there. But um, we certainly exploited it. <laughs> <laughs> it you know, we certainly, we certainly, yeah, yeah. It would just it just wasn't on one song of an album. On the album, it'd be several of them. You know, and we we liked that. We did we did embrace that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in fact, I think I wrote down on the um, on the wall of the practice space. I, I I wrote down on a sharpie. I said, "When you're not making a sound, you actually are." You know. That's very, very interesting. I like that. Very um, very very. Uh, you know. That was good weed. I had good weed that day. <laughs> <laughs> shit, it was good. <laughs> it was good shit. It was good shit. Jose is pointing at me to read I just, this. I just love that quote. That's when um when you um 
you know, hooked up with um, Evo, uh, Evo Watts Russell from uh, 4 mm-hmm. AD, and you mm-hmm. said, all I care about is that you make me famous in the Philippines because all the chicks are really pretty. Is that an accurate quote? Really no, it's that? not. No, it's not. I don't know. Who, <laughs> I don't know who said that. Uh, where that came from. I don't even know why why that's on. Something on some something on that Wikipedia. It just makes me cringe. You know? <laughs> um, it might have been on someone trying to write a book or whatever. I don't remember ever ever saying that. You know. They had my birthday wrong for the longest time, for crying out loud, you know. Like, Did they really? Yeah. Terrible. So being Filipino, I know this has happened probably to Jose as well. This has happened to me a lot since the typhoon. Anytime I come across anybody who recognizes that I'm Filipino, they'll stop me and be like, hey, we're really sorry. Are you, are you Filipino? Yeah, we're a, we're a Filipino-American magazine. Um, oh, okay. I'll which is you. why we sought you out. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> this, all, this is all starting to make sense now. <laughs> oh, now it makes sense. Yeah. But have have people been asking you about what your take on it is? Well, you, you, family you, over there? Yeah, yeah. They asked me if I have family over there and uh, all that. And, um... Uh, you know, uh, we gave some of our money, some touring money, to uh, the Philippines through Oxfam. Uh, it's obviously a terrible thing that happened down there, you know. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you get to go back and visit at all? Um... I, went, we went, I went back there in 95, uh, and actually David Lovering... Uh, uh, went down with us uh, to uh, my my uh, my ex wife's uh, 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 parents' medical mission. Okay. You know what I mean, so uh, we visited around. Um, yeah, I just met up with my um, my uh, my aunts and uncles down there. Yeah, yeah, that was about it. It was hot. That's what they say. You go down there. How is how's the Philippines? Hot. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a big fan of um, Filipino food? I I, I love it. Yeah, yeah. It, it comforts me. It, it does. You know, I like adobo, pancit, and all that stuff. Great. Well, the next time you're uh, in New York, we'll take you out to some good Filipino restaurants up here. Oh, nice. There's nice. restaurants and, like, Filipino cuisine in New York. So, yeah, and next time you guys are here, we'll we'll take you out. Yeah, sure. I, I heard there's a good one in New York City somewhere. So, from what I understand, you guys have like 30 to 40 sa- songs, new songs recorded um, that you plan on kind of just dropping um, online at any given notice. We were we were in Wales. Put it this way: we were in Wales for seven weeks. <laughs> well, okay, okay. So there's there's a lot more to come. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. So seven weeks with people with instruments <laughs> and song. <laughs> and song. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, what happened during those seven weeks? You'll find out. Who's the new bassist? Oh, we got we, uh, Paz. Paz Lichtenstein. She's awesome. Yeah. She was in a... Perfect Circle, I believe. Was perfect, per, yeah, a perfect circle. She's uh, 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 yeah, yeah. She just, she just jams. You know, great groove, great everything. Uh, you know, just, just a joy to be around. Great, great. I mean, it's, sometimes it's nice to have that new element to kind of brings out new stuff in everyone. I bet so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, you know, she's proficient at uh, violin, piano too. So it's pretty cool. I have one last question for you. Do you, Joey Santiago, think mm-hmm. that Kanye West is the reincarnation of Steve Jobs? Of oh, Steve Jobs. <laughs> I just read about it. I wanted to end with a super ridiculous question, and I um, came across that this morning. 
I wonder well, what Joey Santiago thinks of Kanye West rants. <laughs> Well, you know, he's probably going to make an I.I. Um, uh, uh, product. I me. I me. An I me. You know, I'm actually going to go see. I'm going to go uh, see him play this Friday. Jesus, with my girlfriend. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's tomorrow night. Oh, yeah. Don't tell him I made fun of him, please. <laughs> no, no. I, I just want to, I, you know, I, I, it's not my vibe, but I, I, I like, I like, uh, I mean, it's, I love music, you know, I'm a big music fan, and uh, I like it, from my, I listen to his album, I do like it, I mean, the guy is arrogant, what, what can you say, you know, but, uh, you know, I want to see the mountain, <laughs> there's supposed to be a mountain and an iceberg, there's supposed to be a mountain and an iceberg. In the show. That, how is that it, even possible? <laughs> I am going to find out. <laughs> you sure will. I, yes. And, <laughs> and the next time we speak, you can tell me all about it. <laughs> and I'll ask him, if, I'll, 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 I'll ask him if he's the next Steve, if he is Steve Jobs, if I do see him. <laughs> will, you, will you just walk up to him and say, hey, you're Steve Jobs. Yo, Steve. Yeah, I will. <laughs> okay. You uh, let me know how that works out. All right. Well, thank right. you so much for taking the time to talk to us. We um, don't have friends and we don't like each other, so there's really <laughs> no one else I would talk to right now. <laughs> thank All you right. very much for your time. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye, Jennifer. Bye. Bye, Jose. Bye. Sapo